Welcome, 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 everybody. Hopefully you're doing good. Surprise random stream tonight. Uh, since I don't have Pathfinder, I'm not going to be able to stream tomorrow or Friday. Uh, and I really, really, really want to play more 16. And I have just kind of come to the realization that almost nobody comes to watch this particular stream. So I'm just going to play when I feel like and stream when I feel like, whether that's a good time or not, and just sort of uh, the VODs up on YouTube when I'm done. Uh, that way I can play this as often as I feel like, and then also, you know, just do the whole content creator thing. Hey, Violet, hello, dear. Thank you for being here. I, I appreciate it. I mean, like, I'm, when I'm saying, like, nobody shows up, like, a couple people do, but it's just not as many as I would hope. Uh, which means I don't really have to consider timing. Uh, but I just kind of want to get right into it. I've missed you too, Violet. It has been a while. All right. To pick up where we left off, we have returned to Phoenix Gate, the site of the, where we murdered our brother, who is still somehow still alive. Uh, and the crater that we made as Ifrit when we fought Phoenix. I'm also in PNG form tonight instead of what the fuck is... Oh, that's a flag. Okay. It looked kind of like a weird Cthulhu thing for a second there. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, yeah, big, big old crater. Also, we are dressed in our Sunday best, known as... Uh, stealing Trevor Belmont's clothes. Like, like I said, Vic Day, Trevor Belmont from Netflix post Dracula death. Thank you about that. I'm so sorry. It's fixed. We're good. Sorry about that. Flames, Ifrit, Phoenix, Phoenix Gate. So no new info. Okay. All Where right. Is he? Nowhere to be seen. Damn it! He's like a bloody eel. What is this place anyway? Some sort of shrine. Oh, sorry. You've never been here before. This is the Hall of the Gate. The Gate? It's a relic of the Fallen. Only the Phoenix's dominant can open it. Hence the castle's name. This was where Joshua was supposed to... Yes. He would have stepped through this door the next morning and listened to the words of our ancestors. Would you have gone with him? No. The apodotry is holy ground. None but the dominant may enter. Okay, I'm still not giving me information on the apodotry. And the other shields would have stood guard here and prayed for my brother's safe return. Where the hell did he go? Perhaps he went inside. He couldn't have. He'd need the power of the Phoenix. Yeah, 
Yes, Clive, open the door. Well, I mean, it's not heresy if he can open the door. Thank you, Joshua. Are you sure about this? Never more. Hall of the Ancestors. Riot was already becoming an imperial province. The gate was of great importance to the people of the duchy, being the site of the rite of ancestral communion. Okay, okay, okay. Another gate. Let's see if this one opens. Hardly call it a ruin. It's perfect. Like it was built yesterday. Have you ever seen anything like this? I am not sure how I feel about this place. Jill. Cutscene play, we'll check out the old man later. Definitely faster than a bungee elevator. More trouble. Must be what the fallen ruins were like before they fell. Well, honestly, it's more of a miracle that, uh, you know, Joshua and I didn't destroy this place in our fight 13 years ago. Fucking massive. Holy shit.
Ill sharp fangs. in here so like these are like mini little trials it seems So, did they just admit that they've never seen the classic Final Fantasy enemy known as a bomb before? Okay, that's, that's legit. Would Joshua have had to run this gauntlet too? No. At least not that I ever heard about. I imagine the Phoenix would receive a warmer welcome. Here we go again. Where will we end up this time? 
Surrounded by contraptions hell-bent on murdering us, I expect. Could the hooded man really have taken this path? We won't know until we've followed it all the way to the end. You've killed so many of those in the MMO. Yeah, I imagine they're just like perfect fodder in the MMO. Okay, that was a bit of a tougher fight. Now, these are definitely trials of some sort. Okay, okay, okay.
cooldown time at 2.7 seconds, damage by 10%. Last Rook's Gambit. Gouge? Oh, oh, gouge damage. Okay, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, let's, uh, let's increase that. Moon's haunted. I don't like this. Oh, motherfucker. Echoes. Strange clockwork constructs often encountered in fallen ruins. The question of whether or not they are truly alive is open to debate as they do not appear to require water nor do they feed on the flesh of their victims as beasts do and seemingly exist solely to protect their habitat from intruders. All echoes are encased in protective plating that is made from the same material as the ruins and thus cannot be destroyed. The repeated blows will cause individual plates to dislodge, eventually causing the entire construct to collapse on itself. The feeling's mutual. Iron Giant Motherfucker. Oh, wrong button. Chance. 
Iron Giant Dismantled. Not slain? Okay, that's... I like that change in words. It's cool. Fallen Iron. Despite thousands of years of having passed since its forging, a single blemish, scratch, nor patch of rust can be found upon this metal surface. As to how it's possible, a nun can say, and the answer will likely remain lost forever. Oh, it's not gonna tell me what our giant is. Okay. It's done. What are these creatures? And why do they keep attacking us? Probably asking themselves the same thing. We're the ones trespassing here. They're just protecting their home. Jill, look. Not gonna lie, like this just looks like some very That's Final some Fantasy kind of 14 ass looking shit. It is. What the fuck is that thing? All right then. Oh, it's a lich? Right about the moon being haunted, Victay. A little help. There, boy. Strength. 
ESP like mob indeed. This holds even more secrets than we thought. Came in that way. Right. something. Okay, what the hell is going on though? That's what I want to know. So, it isn't a dead end after all. Apparently not. That looks like Garuda. It all seems to lead to this room. And look what's in it. How old do you suppose this is? A thousand years? More? I don't know. I've never seen anything like it before. Who is that in the middle, do you think? Some sort of god. 
that looks like Ifrit mixed with Garuda. going on you, you you're him the second dominant of fire who are you What? Hold on. What? Uh, what? Mm, what? But we already saw who's under the hood. What? What? Joshua chose me to be his shield. He gave me his blessing and asked me to keep him safe. I should have protected him that day. It was my duty. What is... What is going- I have no idea what's- what the fuck is going on? I'm sorry. I failed you. This guy had a kid TF'd into icons and one killed the other? I killed him. Yeah, and, and I blamed another for what I did. Yeah. To spare myself the guilt. Yeah, so the opening the opening of the game uh is Ifrit and the Phoenix clashing, and then through the prologue you realize the Phoenix is his younger brother, and Ifrit is him, but he doesn't know he's Ifrit. And neither does his brother. And he kills his brother out of like absolute like not in control and like witnessing it third party and he's spent aside from being enslaved for for reasons uh, after that uh he spent the entire last 13 years of his life hunting for the man who killed his brother who in reality was actually him uh, and that's what we know right now whether or not that's the truth i don't know because when it revealed the hooded man to be him we've already seen under the hood of the hooded man and it was joshua so, like, I don't know what's going on, because he could be alive, it could be dead, there could be time travel, I don't, I don't fucking know. I just have no idea. I feared the Bai, accepting it. I would lose what little was left of me. So I ran. From everything. And now? Are you ready to accept the truth? I am. I know it won't be easy, but it's... What I must do. 
so that Joshua's soul can finally rest in peace. Okay, so now I get to fight myself? Remember to help me to the truth that awaits me. I will press on. Come, Ifrit. Show me who you truly are. Oh, we get to fight fucking Ifrit. Hell yeah. Oh, fuck. Walter. Honestly, pretty much every fight in this game has been stupid epic. Okay, so this is not as impressive as the Garuda one, but still pretty badass. Oh, 
Oh, I take that back. Mirror world fight myself? Okay. I'll fucking mirror world fight myself? Fuck yeah. Still you deny it. Even when the truth's staring right at you. Come on, Clive. Face your fears.
escape, eh? It's all right. I'm done running from you. Together. Gage, accept the truth. Show yourself, you free. Fucking awesome, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. God, I fucking love this game. <laughs> Holy shit. Love this game. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. So good. Fire shard. The power of the icon Ifrit made manifest the shard of crystal is hot to the touch and can be heard to emit the soft a soft hum when held to the ear. At last you accept the truth. You were born to wield limitless power. Embrace it.
Clive. Are you all right? Jill. It's nothing. I'll be fine. Chasing shadows. The hooded man isn't here. We should go. Look. Clive, are you sure you're all right? Whatever it is, you can tell me. <laughs> I had a hard enough time telling myself. I awakened as a dominant of fire, right here in this castle, and I've been running from it ever since. But now I know for certain who I really am. The second icon of fire, who killed my brother and burned this castle to the ground, was me, Ifrit. Clive. I took so many lives that night and destroyed so many more, including yours. And I must atone for the crimes I've committed, but not before I learn the whole truth. How can a second icon of fire even exist? And why was I chosen as its dominant? Who is the hooded man who brought us here? And what does he want? I need to know. And since I'm still breathing, I might as well make myself useful. We'll find your answers together. I want to learn the truth too. There'll be time enough for atonement when we're done. I was hoping you'd say that. I don't think I could do this without you. You never were one to hide from the truth, even when we were young. You haven't changed a bit. You're wrong. I have changed. But I don't want to be that person anymore. The things she did were unforgivable. And yet, they're what brought us back together. If he is here, then the disturbance I felt at the care must have been confounded. The hour is later than I thought. Okay, there. Are, okay, it has to be time travel, right? Victor, it has to be time travel. Castle Dazbog. Castle Dazbog. Castle built within the dome like mountain that contains Drake's Fang. It is the primary residence of Hugo Kupka, dominant of Titan, and is lavishly appointed to suit uh, his extravagant tastes. Like, it has to be. That whole the hour is later than I thought bit, it has to be time travel. Tell me who did this, or I'll see you 
suffer the same fate. The man who delivered... Who, who delivered the coffer said... He said Sid paid him. I'm willing to bet that is Benedicta's head. Because of course it would be Benedicta's head, because why wouldn't you send that to him? of life. Okay. Ifrit awoken. Clive has gained control of the icon Ifrit, allowing him to access new iconic abilities such as ignition, a very limb that drives back enemies while dealing continuous damage. Close unlocking the limit break gauge. Slots for Ifrit's abilities are shared with those for the Phoenix and can be confirmed via the abilities tab in the main menu. Limit break gauge is located beneath Clive's HP bar. Clive's near inner Clive's inner beast and semi-prime. Release Clive's inner beast and the semi prime into Ifrit by pressing L3 and R3 when this gauge is full. The gauge fills in battle both by taking damage as well as by successfully performing offensive and defensive maneuvers. Semi priming temporarily grants increased attack potency and speed, gradual HP regeneration, and guard breaking strikes. So, what next? We return to Eastpool. I promised the mayor I'd talk to him again about Lady Hannah, amongst other things. Though she may be loath to leave. I can't help thinking she'd be safer with Sid, too. All right. We should arrange an introduction, then. Yeah, I well, I think what it is, because we saw the same hooded person. I'm pretty sure that was... I, I don't know. It's it's complicated. I don't know. I, it's got to be time travel. This is the best way I can put it. Ifrit channeled. Limit break. Will of the Wikes. Summon a storm of fireballs that circle around Clive, damaging nearby targets, also absorbing damage. Attack while charging, inflicting multiple hits, forcing him back, can be used mid air. Yeah, it doesn't. It's very, it's very weird.
It is, you are correct. They did use the plural pronoun of we. What is it? Nothing good, I'll wager. Come on. Let me guess. Still can't do anything with this, yeah? Okay, I still cannot do anything with that. Everything's on fire. Okay. What happened here? Imperials. Jesus fucking killed everybody. Thought you could escape us, did you, Branded? You were born a slave, and you'll die one. Stay down. Um, the the vods are always up on my YouTube as well, love. I know, love. I know. Have a good night, dear.
all must burn! The bearers and those who sheltered them. By Empress Annabella's command! Your mother's a hateful bitch. Pretty much, Violet. Pretty much. Good night, Victay. Love you, dear. Fire right, sharp pain. Okay, we're, we got all the things. Oh, God. Kill mommy. Acting on the orders of the Duchess, eh? We knew East Pole was harboring bearers. Thought they were safe enough hidden up here, but someone must have let slip. If they'd have only come to us sooner, none of this would have had to happen. Fuck! My mother always did despise bearers. The way father embraced them. When the other nations spat on them as slaves. The way an accident of birth gave them a power that others lacked. But why kill everyone? They meant no harm. They just wanted to be free. This world judges that a crime punishable by death. Which is why we're going to change it. Yes! Official confirmation! The whole point is to change the slavery. Fuck yes. Gav, we want to help. Thought you'd got your own stuff to be getting on with. We do. 
but it can wait. In that case, we should head back and tell Sid you've had a change of heart. He was always on it yet to join us. All right. And we'd best be quick. Last I heard, he was planning another excursion. What about the villagers? Oi! Can I leave you's lot to take care of things here? Of course. We'll make sure they get a proper burial. Thank you. All of you. When you're ready, then. Hell. Fucking Christ. Now, rats, lead me to your nest. Lord Kutger's message for your leader. If only he. Those who maintain allegiance to the late Archduke Elwind after Rosario was incorporated in the Empire, most were loyal to the new Vicerine, the Empress Annabella, even more. Converting after they saw how those who refused to change their allegiances were persecuted, this persecution was to only grow, culminating in the burning of Eastpool by Imperial troops on the pretext that their reluctance to surrender Rosalys Barris to the constabulary proved their disloyalty to the Holy Throne. The term had a different meaning in the time before Imperial Occupation Rosario was founded by the union of several small independent nations, each led by its own noble house. Those houses remained powerful even after unification, sometimes leading to friction between the loyalists who argued for the Archduke's ultimate authority and the separatists who pushed for a return to autonomy. Writing wrongs. Fuck yeah. To Sid Sola, then. We have a lot to discuss. And what do you want? Going purse weighing you down? Is that all? Make it quick. I'm saying for you, dear. Anything else? Come for a tail? You wish to study the tomes? March of Eastpool was a brutal attack on the Zarian village of Eastpool in 873, which we just witnessed. And molested from the Empress of the Sandberg and Vicerine of Rosaria ordered that all bears being harbored by the villagers be slaughtered along with those ducal loyalists who had given them shelter. The ensuing massacre, Eastpool's population was effectively decimated, and ultimately the village was abandoned. Uh, Hugo Kupka. Uh, his greatest treasure, however, was always Benedict de Harmon, so when a servant of Walud informed him that his love had been slain by Sid, his fury toward the outlaw and his allies knew no bounds.
chief cook at Sid's hideaway, though the range and quantity of ingredients on offer is in their hidden deadland home is limited at best. Kenneth finds opportunity in adversity, concocting toothsome fare from whatever happens to be at hand. Carpenter, who resides in Martha's Rest, who's speed and skill together with surrounding marsh waters to uh, Demetrius effects on the planks, plows, the villages, many bridges to keep his services high in demand. Pottery, a place of worship located in the depths of Phoenix Gate, an ancient stronghold on the northwestern border of the former Duchy of Rosaria. Large mural dominates the sacred chamber where the rite of ancestral communion, a ceremony carried out by the Duchy's dominant prior to marching to battle, was once performed. Territorialization of Rosaria, 861, taking advantage of discord, rising from Rosaria's internal woes at the wake of the Men of the Flames, Iron Blood launched an attack that inflicted devastating losses on the already crippled nation, robbing it of what little power remained. Later that same year, Sandberg stepped in and forced the once proud duchy to submit to one final humiliation by becoming a vassal state of the Empire, just as Duchess Annabella and her Imperial conspirators had planned. She's a cunt. Uh, let's see... Iron Blood Invasion followed me and fled here. Bears who had lost their masters and glory the population, however, was wiped out in the culling of bears ordered by Empress Annabella. Three reeds, an area of marshland, eastern part of the Imperial Province of Rosaria, just south of Martha's Rest, numerous shacks and halls dotted about the swamp suggest that the area was once at least sparsely populated. However, now most lie broken and abandoned, their owners having fled for more habitable climes once the waters began to rise. In the year 860, at Emperor Sylvester's behest, the Cardinals agreed upon a plan to liberate Rosaria from the marauding forces of the Iron Kingdom, after which the Duchy had little choice but to bend the knee and become an imperial province. A nation formed of a federation of five smaller states is located in the southern half of also home of the Mother Crystal and Drake's Fang, inside which stands Castle Dazbog, home of Hugo Cupka, Dominant of Titan and Warden of Earth. Mysteries of the Realm. Uh, let's see. A person with the power bearer. A person with the power to cast magic that crystal and Valesia, men and women, awakens bears and slay, branded with the mark of their cheek, at least some call them the pejorative monarch of branded. Though their powers do not begin to approach those of the Almighty Dominance, they too suffer from the crystal's curse, gradually turning to stone over a lifetime of channeling ether for others. Bearers forced to fight for the nations that enslaved them to stymie the urge to flee the penalty for desertion is death, and soldiers are encouraged to keep a close watch on each other to prevent others from doing so. The brand upon a soldier's cheek presenting an additional obstacle, and so most follow their orders, turning steadily to stone with each draw on the ether, to lose one's life to the cause being lauded as a hero's death. Ugh. Uh, those within whom sleeps the power of an icon, though they look and think no differently than a human, they must transform themselves into beasts, world chatter, and strength. Only ever one dominant for each icon, a new dominant only awakening after the previous die, some awaken at birth, while others choose their life chosen later in life. But once one is chosen, one's life changes forever. That is true. That is very true. Ultima's Thralls. Okay, twisted glowing blue creatures that awaited Clive and Jill deep within the Phoenix Gate to try and prevent them from gaining the innermost recesses of the Apoda Tree. So we're gonna have to fucking fight Ultima, okay. A wall painting found in the depths of the Apoda Tree under Phoenix Gate who created it, and for what purpose is unknown, but the celestial being in the center suggests some connection to long lost religion. Okay. Ultima, that's legit. Uh, making habit of waters both fresh and brackish, these goodly crustaceans spend most of their time buried in the mud where they warm their sanguine humors as they wait for a potential meal to wander by. Since the time of the founder, the peoples of Rosaria have hunted megalocrab for its sweet, succulent flesh and creamy tomily, the species having been known amongst small folk as fire crab for the bright red color and phoenix-like patterns in which emerge in the shells after boiling. Breaklaws, found mostly in and around the lakes and rivers of Sandberg and Rosaria, those deadly predators are equipped with scissor-like pincers with which to dismember and eviscerate their prey. If they were not enough, the creatures take in the water from their habitat to create highly corrosive juices in their bellies, which they then spit out onto their victim's flesh to soften it, making it easier to consume. That's just a scorpion lobster. It's fucked up. 
Antelopes, large herborbeous er creature found mainly in storm. It has distinctive elaborate antlers, antlers and long sinuous limbs, which it uses to leap gracefully into the air. It attacks mainly with its antlers and rear legs, but many hunters are prepared to face such dangers nonetheless in order to acquire the lustrous, supple pelts for which the noble beasts are famed. Bighorns, found to graze primarily in the emerald meadows of Rosaria or the windswept savannas of Dalmechia, bighorns are easily recognized by the eponymous gross, the length of which can often exceed several score hands that just sideways that jut sideways from their crowns these horns as well as their hard wearing hives are prized throughout Valesia and can be bought and sold at marketplaces all over the realm caution however it is recommended when hunting for creatures as they are highly territorial and will, cha will charge relentlessly at anything that might stray into their line of sight Is there a reason here? There we go. Uh, Adamantois, enormous creatures with nigh impermeable, oddly fertile shells that play host to diverse flora that provide painfully conspicuous reptiles with much needed camouflage in bogs and fens. They call their homes. At a glance, these lumbering giants may not appear much of a threat, but at the first sign of danger, they will retreat their heads and limbs and whip themselves into frenetic spins that have been known to flatten entire homes. Bombs. Floating masses of self-contained flame found across both storm and ash. These creatures lack the flesh with which we associate with typical fauna, leading scholars of the natural world to posit that they are not descended of any beast, but rather ungodly creations of the fallen. By suppressing their internal furnaces, bombs can allow their bodies to cool and harden until appearing not more than simple stones and worthy of remark. It is in this form that they hunt their prey, waiting until an unfortunate soul has stumbled upon on their place of rest before rising from the ground to spew forth fiery gouts of death. Oddly, should the prey fight back, the bomb will not flee, but rather combust spontaneously, sacrificing its own life to save the flock. Iron giants, oversized suits of armor animated by lost fallen magic, deceptively swift. Despite their size, they wield both sword and shield skillfully and effectively, while the otherworldly plate which surrounds their vulnerable cores provide them with a nigh-impenetrable defense. Cool. You're always welcome, Clive. <laughs> Do you need any help, uh, Miss Molly? I can set a broken arm, soothe a cough, settle a stomach. But there is no remedy for what mm -hmm. happened in Eastpool. My talents are worthless. Mm -hmm. I just want to give you a big hug, Violet. Such cruelty. We can keep running, or we can walk through this door. All right, Sid, what you got? This place is getting more crowded by the day. I tell myself the bustle's a blessing. There'll be time enough for quiet contemplation when I'm dead. So, did you find the answers you were looking for? I still don't know what to make of this gift, curse, or whatever it is I've been given. But there is one thing I can say for certain. I am a dominant. Ifrit. And there is nothing I can do to change that. It is a burden I must bear until my dying day. <laughs> Spoken true. Forgiveness and in turn salvation can only begin with acceptance. It's a path we all must walk. No matter how colorful our histories. Sid, Sid you were so good. Me that you wanted to build a place where people could die on their own terms. I did. I've been thinking about that. Why not a place where people can live on their own terms? For 13 years, killing was all I knew. So obsessed with death that I never stopped to consider the lives of those around me. Lives that 
I see now was scarcely worth living. Be they bearers or beggars, most but march blindly to their end, never realizing that they too deserve a leather corset a choice. jacket would be good. And I dare not turn a blind eye to their suffering any longer. So, atonement then, is it? That was the answer we found. The only one we need. I'll be expecting you both to pull your weight. And we will. <laughs> well then, with a sprinkle of fire and ice, this plan of mine might just work. <sighs> what trouble are you looking to get yourself into now? The best kind. We're going to sneak into the Imperial capital and pay a visit to Mother. <laughs> oh, Sid, you bastard. Oriflame, the capital of the Holy Empire of Sandberg, located in the northeastern storm on a peninsula that dominates Olopest Bay and is home to the mother crystal known as Drake's Head. All the Empire's major institutions are located here, including White Worm Castle, set on the Holy em seat of the Holy Emperor and meeting place of the Cardinals. And the last of our farmholds in the eastern provinces has succumbed to the blight. Without their yield, we will be hard-pressed to fill the capital's granaries before winter. If there is a capital by then, the black creeps closer as we speak. And yet you do naught but bore and bluster. Your radiance? If it is fertile land the Empire requires, we need but look south. Uh, if you mean the crystalline Dominion's holdings, we are bound by mutual accord. Theirs is a neutral state whose borders we are sworn to respect. Gentlemen, did we swear to see our people starve? Well, I really do think that... Uh, well, yeah. well, I, <laughs> Hold on. So, Sylvester Lessage, Emperor of the Holy Empire of Sandberg, who won his throne at least partly by virtue of his son Dion, having awakened as the dominant of Bahamut. Okay. Council of Elders, advisors of the Holy Empire of Sandberg, and the highest of government in the Empire, the Council consists of five cardinals of the of the Gregorian, Gregorian Church, uh, not Gregorian, as they have corrected me, the Gregorian Church were intended to rule the in the Emperor's stead. The Emperor, meanwhile, is expected to serve as a constitutional monarch, but there is little to prevent one who wishes to impose their will upon the Council from playing a more autocratic role. Crystalline Dominion, a tiny independent state straddling the continents of Storm and Ash, its capital Twinside, is built on the tiny Isle of Ark from which the Mother Crystal Drake's tail raises. Uh, the lack of a dominant has seen the Dominion become the subject of constant maneuvering over the years, both political and military, and it was only through the recent convening of a Council of All Nations that a non-aggression treaty towards the neutral body was forged, and a tenuous stability amongst centuries-old rivals achieved. The gates of Oriflam buckle at the flood of those come seeking refuge from the Blight. If there is not grain enough to feed those within our walls, how, pray tell, will we feed those without? But instead of setting your minds to riddles such as these, you lock horns with an enemy from across the sea, sending our soldiers to the slaughter in their thousands. 
The Empire bleeds, and you sit here prattling like crones in a tea house. And you fancy yourselves leaders of men. Sandbreck is naught without her citizens. We are but their servants. If their land is being wrested away, it is our duty to claim new lands for them. Your radiance! You cannot mean a war of conquest. That is exactly what I mean. It is time we expanded our dominion. This is the will of great Grieger. <laughs> there will be uproar. Then we must find a way to distract the citizenry. But how much will that cost? And what of our legions? Shall we raise the furs? Well, someone will have to contend with the Delmex. I will not keep you. You all have much to do. Fuck this man. Where is my son? The Lord Prince is currently garrisoned at the Strait of Arthur. If it please you, I can send word requesting his immediate return to the Holy Capital. That won't be necessary. Tell him instead to see to his wounds. Bahamut's strength will be needed again soon. As you command. I must have misheard. You mean to tell me that the Mother Crystals are the reason the world is dying? Are you mad? I have been called that on occasion, but no, not today. We've all seen it firsthand. Empty wastes where once were green meadows. Land drained so dry of its ether, not even the rats remained. But where was it all going? I spent years searching for an answer, until I saw it standing right in front of me. There, in the self-same crystals, we look to for their so-called blessing. All right, listen. Take this crystal. How does it allow us to conjure magics? Answer, by drawing ambient ether from the air. Where do these crystals come from? That's easy. They're mined from the mother crystals. They're one and the same. Although, admittedly, this here fits more easily in the pocket. But the mother crystals are massive. Some as large as mountains. So you see the problem. Imagine just how much ether can be drawn by something that size. As to where it's all going, mind, well... I can't know everything, can I? We are taught that the Mother Crystals are divine. Their ether a gift from the heavens. For centuries, nations have fought and fallen for want of that gift. If what you say is true, how did no one else see it? Who says they didn't? Maybe the truth was inconvenient. Inconvenient to whom, exactly? gods themselves so now you want to do something about the crystals and what we're not helping bearers and dominance anymore I didn't say that I made a promise and I intend to keep it but if we continue down this path there's only one fate that awaits the realm and we can't very well set our people free if they're all lying dead in a blighted ditch. Not if we want to create a place where they can live on their own terms anyway. Sort of defeats the purpose. I fucking love you, Sid. So, if we have to bring the old world crashing down, 
in order to build us a new one. What say you? Are you with me? I suppose it's about time I repaid your faith. <laughs> you could have just said I. But it's nice to have you aboard all the same. Fuck Christ. What have I got myself into? I'm going to need more than a few potions for this. Send a message. You've lost a letter. Nothing too important, I hope. Not just a letter. I lost everything. There's a hole in my damned pack, and fool that I am, I didn't bloody notice. It can't be that bad, surely. How could it be any worse? I'm a courier. I carry things. If I can't do my job right, then what am I good for? Nothing, that's what. I buggered it right up. That means no herbs for the infirmary, and no fresh meat for our cooking pots. Worst of all, that letter I lost? It was for Sid. A letter he's been waiting on for days. Maybe if you retrace your steps. I'd scour storm from coast to coast if I could, but there are curse breakers in the field, counting on my arrival. No, I'll just have to own up to Otto and Sid. They're gonna skin me alive. I'll help you. I'll help you. Fine. Tell me where to look. Are you serious? Thank you. It sounds like the hideaway could use those supplies. So, where should I start? Gotan's bales, perhaps? I took a tumble in the bushes when I was passing through. There's a chance my pack might have caught on something. If you can find everything I dropped, you'll be doing us all a favor. And if you can find Sid's letter, you'll be saving my life. If it's there, I'll find it. Wonderful. Now, I have to run if I'm to make my next delivery in time. I trust you can find your way to Gotan's bales. Oh, and hurry, will you? Sid doesn't like to be kept waiting. I'm sure he doesn't. The letter won't last very long out in the elements. I should make for Sambrek as soon as I can. Clive! You're all right! I thought you might be... Ah. So what God's forsaken corner of the realm is Sid dragging you off to this time? Oriflam. The holy capital. And what business would you lot having? On second thoughts, I don't want to know. Find a better price than that. It'd better all be here. You're rubbing me blind, you know. You'll not find a better price than that. You're rubbing me blind, you know. Speaking of Oriflam, I hear the trading routes leading south have seen more than double the usual traffic. If you ask me, some at Fowl's Brewing, and a tint tie is Borbile Tea. Oh, 
Just go and see Otto, will you? All right. Make it quick. So, will it be? Storm Cry. Oh, so okay. So this plus this equals flame tongue. It's tongue flame that's with a tongue with a tongue of flame spake he the words of destruction. Fuck yeah. No scratches, all right. Oh, that, that sword looks fucking great. Good day. Now this, I believe you will find most interesting. Founder, Continent Accord. National Pact made the dawn at the dawn of the present era in which such matters as the treatment of bearers and the attachment of realm-wide currency were laid out. It formed the basis of much of Alessian society as it stands today, including the branding of bearers and their status as non-persons. It also put in place a universal calendar marking a symbolic fresh start for mankind, albeit one which put magic users at a crippling disadvantage. The Founder. Fear and uncertainty reigned in those years following the sins of Dismac Dismacus? Dis it is Mechus. Not wanting to further incur the wrath of the heavens, the few who survived the fall took to wandering the land, spurning magic and staying to the shadows, and so they lived for decades. One man, however, grew tired of this life, if it could be called that, and after bidding his companions farewell, climbed a grassy knoll overlooking a forest of beech and alder. Here he gathered a pile of rubble and used it to build a humble shelter in which he spent the night. The next morning, however, instead of abandoning his work, as was his people's wont, he gathered more rocks, adding to the structure until the shelter had become a shack. This he continued for days, weeks, until the shack had become a home. At first, those few wanderers who passed the knoll would shun him, cursing the man under their breaths for his hubris. But as his estate grew, and one building became two, and two, three, the people began to slow their steps. It was not long before some took to joining him on that knoll, gathering stones, building new lives, new destinies. This they did without magics or machines, without boon or blessing. They relied on naught but their hands, their backs, their wills, and with each other. And slowly, house gave way to village, village to town, town to nation. The man would one day die, as all men do, but those who remained continued his legacy, expanded upon it, and though his name is eventually forgotten, all his spirit lives to this day in the hearts of all Rosarians. Legend of the Founder, Moss the Chronicler. You wish to study the tomes? Uh, shocking truth, mother crystals were the cause of all consuming blight. Makes plans to see the mother's fall, that Valesia and her people might be saved. Uh, let's see. Though the people of Valesia rely on the crystal mine from these mountains in their dirty every lives, they flock the Etheridge lands around them in pursuit of their blessings. Sid posits it is in fact the mother crystals and their ability to draw ether from the earth that is this reason for the Deadlands advance. The few who learn the truth are hunted down by those in positions of power, those whose power rests on their continued control of this crucial resource. Nation occupying northern reaches of... The one true goddess made flesh. According to the Gregorian faith, who is served unquestionably by the Sworn Knights, the Blessed Dragon, known more commonly as the Dragoons. Okay, Drake's Head. Mother, Mother Crystal situated in the Sea of Grace. In northern Sandberg, Drake's Head towers over the holy capital of Oriflame. It's mighty from a its mighty form a testament to the power and permanence of the Empire, however mysterious Aether floods, and the spectre of the ever encroaching blight have fled some in power to call the call that permanence into question. Uh... First and foremost are the five cardinals who make up the Council of Elders, second only to the Holy Emperor in the Imperial Government. 
It is his role to lead the council in governing Sandberg in the Emperor's stead and providing the latter does not overrule his decisions and authority. Dion Lessig, firstborn son of the Holy Empire, uh, the Dragoon, leader of the Dragoons, Dion is also the dominant of Bahamut, Warden of Light, has often been called upon to summon his icon in defense of his countrymen more recently in the year 873 when Odin took to the field against them in the Battle of Bellastor. Uh, all right. Anxious to atone for the crimes and filled with righteous anger after witnessing the massacre at Eastpool, he pledges himself to Sid's cause to free all of Lessian from its bonds, not only those between bear and master, but those between man and mother crystal. Towering citadel from which the Holy Emperor Sandberg rules over the entirety of his domains, domain, I guess, let's take me how that's uh, domain. With the Mother Crystal rising above it and the Imperial Capital of Oriflame spread out below, this ivory edifice is truly a wonder to behold. Senior statesmen that make up the highest office of government, Council of Supervisor High Cardinal, Representative Central Sandberg, four cardinals who administer outer provinces in northern, southern, eastern, and western seas. <clears throat> the Breadbasket, region of looking straight of Autha in eastern. Part of Sandberg's bounty provided by its rich soil fed the Empire for generations until the ever-encroaching blight intervened in displacing thousands in the process, a disturbance which played no small part in these troubles that were later to engulf the Imperial capital. Narrow channel north of the Crystalline Dominion that separates the continents of Storm and Ash from Sandberg to the west, Wailud to the east, and the Dominion to the south, its shores are never short of soldiers or political tension. The Gregorian Church, Sith religion of the Holy Empire of Sandberg, follows to worship the goddess Grieger as the one true deity. At the church's head stands the Holy Emperor, voted into office by his fellow cardinals, and supposedly their equal, though this is widely recognized to be a convenient fiction, the followers of Grieger worship dragons as sacred servants of their goddess, and since the founding days of the Empire, they have both doted and depended upon them. Did you Go. learn everything you needed? Do you need any help, uh, Miss Molly? I don't know. Uh, is it just the two here? Yeah, it's just the two, okay. He's never this late. Where are you, Randall? Is everything all right? Forgive me, young man. I was in a world of my own. I'm worried about my friend, you see. <laughs> He left some time ago and hasn't returned. You know what it's like out there for a bear on his own. Why leave the safety of the hideaway? For coin. Sad though it is, our need outweighs the risk. The hideaway can't survive on goodwill alone. And though Karen does what she can, her coffers aren't bottomless. Wait. You were a soldier, were you not? Mm. In the Imperial Army. I was. Then, might I ask a favor of you? I'm too old to be traipsing hither and yon. Will you go and find him for me? I'll do what I can. Oh, thank you. What can you tell me about your friend? His name is Randall, and I suspect you'll find him in Lost Wing. He's been working for Quinton, the tavern keeper. He'll know something, I'm sure. I'll speak to him. Safe travels, my friend. And thank you again.
Curious said his pack might have split while he was passing through the bales. I better keep my eyes open. Good. Looks like I'm in the right area. More of the lost supplies. Fit much more in his pack. Still no sign of Sid's letter, though. I've come this far. Might as well ask around. A little overdressed to be picking grapes, aren't you? Are you here for Master Quentin? I'm looking for a letter someone dropped nearby. And I suppose you've seen it. Can't say I have, sorry. Well... If you do. Wait, I did pass a dog with something in its mouth a little while back. Could have been a piece of paper. No idea if it was your letter, but you never know. Which way did it go? Towards Lost Wing. Seemed well looked after to me. Dare say someone there's been feeding it. To the village then. Thank you. Have you know, man in the village entry is no small task. It's lucky to be a fine harvest this year. I'm back, are you? Did Master Quint in summon yet? The shad's all salted and smoked. It'll be an age before the sleep. A whole day on the line and they're still not dry. Mm. It seems we have our culprit. Sorry, boy. Someone's waiting for this. And he's waiting long enough already. Hopefully this will keep our career out of trouble. But what will we do for supper? But how did the grocer know his daughter had been stealing off to the vineyard to see the lad? We haven't much, but you're free to look. Good day. Sun's setting fast. Ah, if it isn't Sid's young protege. To what do I owe the pleasure? I'm looking for a bearer called Randall. I hear he's been coming to you for work. He was expected back at the hideaway some time ago. A friend of his asked me to check on him. Randall, you say? The porter. Yes, yes, I know him. And I can't say I'm surprised if he has been delayed. I gave him enough to do. Though, thinking about it, he should probably have been back by now. I'll go and look for him. Where was he headed? He was to meet an associate of mine to the south of here, on Lorbert's Pass. I do hope nothing's happened to him. Be sure to let me know, Clive. Mm-hmm. Can I have another cup, Teddy? There'll oh, be none sorry. left for me. <laughs>
Don't mind me, just a nice little run in the woods. From a couple of the bearers, what you did to them royalists over at the care. <laughs> Glad you're on our side. Hanged man. Thank the gods. You're one of us. We were attacked. Beastmen on the road. Randall knew he didn't play the hero, but <coughs> Reckless Sod insisted on drawing them off. Where did this happen? Further down the road. In the clearing. Please. You have to see that he's safe. Yeah, I'll, I'll do, do it. I can. I'll do it. Not a problem. Lost Wing and tell Quentin what happened. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure, Violet. Enjoy your movie with Alexis. I'm unsure who Alexis is, but enjoy your movie. Very little rhyme and even less reason when used in creation of this ghastly neck ornament. I don't know why the name doesn't ring a bell, Violet. I'm so sorry. Oh, Alexis! No, okay, no, I remember it. Nope, I remember. Okay, cool.
Sorry, Randall. Looks like I was too late. He doesn't deserve to rot by the roadside. I'll speak to Quentin. Ah, there you are. My man told me what happened. And? I can't help but notice you're alone. Damn it. I feared as much. He's not far from the South Gate. I trust you'll do right by him. Of course. I'll send someone right away. I knew he was brave. No, I didn't know he was reckless. Poor fool. And you known him long? A while. I liked the fact that he didn't shy away from dangerous work. And he liked what I paid. Because it helped keep the hideaway afloat. I'll tell Sid what happened here. I expect he'll be none too pleased to learn of Randall's fate. And I suppose you're none too happy either. For your trouble. Yeah, you kind of suck, dude. All right, y'all. Let's go turn in our next quest here. The reports from Eastpool are disturbing. We knew the Vicerine had no love for her subjects, but to order the slaughter of an entire village. Yeah, no, she's a fucking monster. Maybe I should just own up to what Owen said. There you are. I just got back to the hideaway and thankfully Otto hasn't seen me yet. I, I don't suppose you, um... Found the things you dropped. I did. Yeah, we just collected so your sure shit in the middle gone. of the field, my friend. Ma maybe Better. next time, don't, uh, yeah, don't drop your shit. Where. Lost supplies. Lost letter. more skulking about in the shadows for me then <laughs> and all thanks to you losing those supplies was one thing but if Sid had found out about that letter is it about curse breaker business uh, if only it's from his daughter she's off studying in Canver and her letters are all that keeps Sid sane while she's away holy shit Sid has a daughter? a daughter well he's a busy man and thanks to you, he won't be wasting his time smiting careless couriers with leaven bolts. So I'd say you did us both a service. Here, for your troubles. If there's anything you're wanting from Sid, today's the day. He'll be sweet as honey once he gets his hands on this.
five, was it? Forty-six ability points. What can you do with that? <sighs> Could buy an ability that I'm not going to use. Well, you know what? I think, I think we're going to call it there. It is actually really late. Um, so, yeah, we're going to please stick around. We're going to raid somebody. Um, so don't just like disappear. Thank you all for joining a random late night stream. This wasn't exactly planned. Uh, we're going to raid Rookie. They are doing something. So I want to shoot them. Uh, some type of D&D game. Yeah, we're gonna do that. Uh, thank you everybody who hung out till the end, which would be Cloudy Rennie, Purple Foxy, Simsco, and Wrath the Fallen. I really appreciate y'all coming and hanging out tonight. Um, if you are new here and haven't followed and you liked my content, uh, please, please, please hit that follow button. You won't miss a stream. Uh, next stream might be Saturday. Um, with some Destiny 2, probably some King's Fall raid farming, maybe. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, we will see. Uh, other than that, if that doesn't end up happening, it'll be next Tuesday would be the next stream. Oh, oh I've holy shit. You. I was starting to worry you wouldn't make it home tonight. Oh, God damn it. Oh, I love you, Irish. I'm actually, like, just getting ready to raid out. Oh, my lord. Uh, <laughs> Irish, honey, baby. I am so sorry. Uh, we are... <laughs> we are literally raiding out, Irish. I'm so sorry. Everybody who just came here with Irish, I am so sorry. We're actually going to be ending. Please stick around so we can raid somebody else. Please don't go anywhere. I promise if you've never been here before, uh, please hit that follow button. I am Sapphire Sunset. I am a trans woman, a fox girl furry, a variety streamer. Uh, I stream normally Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays with Tuesdays and Thursdays right now being dedicated specifically to Final Fantasy 16. Normally I do different games each day, uh, Thursday and uh, Tuesday and Thursday, and then Friday and Saturday are Destiny 2 nights, which are usually uh, pretty much the same. Uh, it's, it's okay, we're gonna raid another friend of mine that's doing some D&D, it'll be fine, so please, please, please stick around, and like I said, if you are interested in, in checking me out, please hit that follow button, I'm so sorry y'all raided at the end, this was just kind of an impromptu stream, because when it comes to Final Fantasy 16 for me, nobody really shows up, so I don't really care what time I stream it at this point, but normally it's 6pm through, uh, like 6pm, uh, central starting time on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but we will see if that schedule changes or not. Uh, but anyways, yeah, please stick around. We're going to raid uh, my friend at Brookie Bear. She's fucking adorable. Uh, so please, please, please stick around for that. And again, thank you, Irish. I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, please copy and paste raid message one if any of you are subscribed to my chat into Brookie's stream, um, as that is our raid message with emotes. If you are not here, uh, if you're not subscribed, please copy and paste raid message too and please please show up for the next stream uh if you are interested in, in a cool fox girl furry and some cool content um we should be doing some king's fall raid farming on saturday if i can get around to it y'all are wonderful have a good night and show brookie a wonderful time <laughs>